Hello, welcome to New Harvest Christian Fellowship, Manchester, England, and thank you for subscribing to our sermon podcast. The message you're about to hear was recorded live at one of our recent services. We pray it will be a blessing to your life, and if you'd like to get in touch with us, we'll give you our contact information at the end of the recording. Thank you once again. Enjoy the preaching. Tonight we're starting the Truth Project, and we're really, really excited about that. So encouraged. Uh, it's an exciting DVD series that we're going to be showing for 12 weeks. We have a couple of gaps in there for uh, Mother's Day and then for Easter Sunday. We won't have them on those days, but it will finish in the middle of April, which will just prepare us in time for our team from Modesto, California that's going to be coming over in May. So uh, come out to the Truth Project. I know that you'll gain knowledge. It will help you in your walk with God. If you're here and you're not a Christian or you're here and you're a nominal Christian and you're not sure about your Christianity, this will help you. If you're a Christian that desires to reach out to other people and to share your faith but you're a little timid because they throw questions at you that you can't answer, this will help you and empower you. If maybe you're just a Christian that wants to walk solid in the things of God, this will help you. I promise you, and I I don't go out on limbs like this very often, but I just know that if we come to all of the sessions, we will be blessed. And so come on out and participate. It starts at 6 p.m. It's about 50 minutes, a little over 50 minutes, the DVD teaching. Uh, And then we'll have a little discussion afterwards. We'll finish by half seven, I promise. Come on time because we're starting on time. And if you miss a bit, you're going to miss kind of the concepts that are going. So uh, you want to get here by six. You should probably try to be here at uh, a few minutes before so that you could get your good seat right down here in the front. With, with us solid people, you know, right here in the front. <laughs> uh, we are going to be having uh, the, we're going to be doing it down here, and we'll have the uh, moms and babies room open for those that have their kids. Your kids, if they can sit quietly and color and read or something, you can put them in the back with you here, and that's fine, or you can use the mom and baby's room, whichever works best for you. We won't ha- be having official nursery upstairs, but... Uh, we can make it work down here so as many that wants to participate can. So we wanted to let you know that. We also want to tell you that on Wednesday we have a very special guest speaker all the way from Leeds. Uh, Pastor Jonathan Davies will be here. And we're excited to have Pastor Jonathan. He's going to be sharing the word with us at 7. We're here at 6 for prayer. Upstairs we pray before every service. And I want to encourage you to come on out and pray. I really do. Uh, You know, when we first arrived uh, from the U.S., we were so impressed with the uh, uh, enthusiastic prayer and the people that would attend. And I want to tell you, I'm praying for that to continue on and for God to do greater things. So come on out and pray with us. Six o'clock if you're able to get off work early. Uh, Seven o'clock the service starts and we'll be uh, encouraged by Pastor Jonathan. And for the ladies, we have a very special uh, event coming up. It's Into the Secret Place. And that's going to be on the 19th of January. And so that's our annual uh, all, we call it all night prayer, but it's not all night, but it's all of the beginning of the night uh, from 7 until 12 with uh, teachings, prayer, worship. Uh, you'll, You'll enjoy it. And so it's for all of the ladies to come invite somebody out. I know you'll be blessed. Good way to kick off 2018. Wouldn't you agree, ladies? Yeah, it's a good good way, and so come on out uh, to that. And then one final thing, we have lots of things going on, but I can't announce them all because you've probably forgotten half of them already. And so we have for the men, we have our men's discipleship class, which is going to be happening very soon, the 27th. January, it's on a Saturday, uh, you want to come on out, 9.30, we're going to have some fellowship and uh, some snacks, and then uh, at 10 uh, a.m. we will start the men's discipleship class, so we wanted to share that with you. So that's all of the announcements, we're going to go ahead and get into the Word of God uh, today. If you brought your Bibles, you can open them up into the book of John, chapter 15. I want to talk to you today about unlimited power. That's our theme for the uh, year. We're going to try and focus on God's unlimited power, not just in talk, but in deed. 
We want to experience that in our lives. This means for some of you, we want to help you to overcome some of the obstacles that have been in your way, some habits maybe that you've picked up that you wish you would have never started and now find yourself kind of in a jam, as we say, kind of in a place where you can't get out. God's power is there to help you. We need to see God's power manifested in the earth, specifically here, Manchester, Salford, for God to do great things here so that unbelievers will say, wow, I've never experienced that before. When I got saved, I was uh, uh, had a good job, actually, but I was using drugs every single day. I was an alcoholic, and so to give that up was an important thing. I needed to do that, but I had nothing to replace it with until I came to Christ, and I said, wow, this has made me high. This has made me excited. I'm energized more than any intoxicant could ever do. I think that was the power of God. And I want to see the unlimited power of God like that in your life and in our area. Would you agree with me? And so we believe that God can do things for us, but I want you to also open your heart that he wants to move through you. He gives us assignments. Assignments. Assignments are good. I know sometimes when we're in school or even on the job, we get an assignment, we go, oh, not that one. I don't like those things. But truth be told, we do like when we get an assignment that fits who we are. We like certain jobs at our jobs. We like certain tasks. And God is able to tailor-make the task for your life. But it's going to be God moving through you. I understand that sometimes this takes time. (laughs) I recognize today that we are sinners by nature. And we move forward, yes, 2018, till the first week we're already kind of moving back. And the newness of the New Year's Eve service has already worn off. Sad, but true. (laughs) The truth is, though, God is patient with us. He will take time. He will give you time to move and to see him manifest. He has a desire to move through you with his unlimited power. I want you to get, catch that. I also want you to understand that you're a vessel. You're a vessel. You're a container of God. And if you can understand that he's the one that fills you and that you come and you pour out his power where he deems it that you must, whether it be something like preaching, teaching, Bible study, or whether it be serving, cleaning, helping, whether it be talking, witnessing, Whatever the case may be, we need his power, and then we pour it out a little bit, and he refills our cup. So today, I want to read with you out of John chapter 15. Because we first must realize that we need God's power. See, this may sound simplistic, that we need God's power. Every Christian should probably know this already. But the truth is that sometimes we start off needing his God's power, and then we just drift from that and begin to live our Christian life in a religious mindset, utilizing our own power rather than his power. We have to realize, do you need God's power today? Be careful. Be careful. Do you need his power? Okay, now I want you to think about what do you need his power in? Because it's not good enough just to say, well, I nominally need his power. Of course we do. What? For what purpose? Some of you may be saying, well, I just need power to live with him. (laughs) I just need power to survive. Well, those are good too. That's true. But if you need power to live with him, then she needs power or he needs power to live with you. Reality is we all need him, but why? Why? Here's what John 15, verse 4 and 5 says. Abide in me, and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Let that sink in. We are the branches. You can read the whole passage. It tells us that. We can't bear fruit of ourselves. 
the things you want to accomplish, the things you want to develop in your own life cannot be done by just because you say, oh, I'd like that. Oh, I need some of that. Oh, I feel like that. It's going to take more than that. You can't get it without abiding in the vine, the Scripture says. So neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me and I in him, he bears much fruit. For apart from me, you can do nothing. (laughs) Apart from me, you can do nothing. I want you to just try to drink in the, the, the fullness of that statement. Apart from him, nothing can be accomplished. So that should mean for those of us who are God-fearing, God-loving people, Christ-like people, we should want to be closer to him. Our 2018 should be about being next to him. This should be our great desire. He gives us the power to accomplish his mission on earth. He says, if you abide in me, I will give you the power to bear fruit wherever you go. But then he issues a command. Matthew 28, 18 and 19 says, All authority, all power has been given to me, Jesus says, in heaven and earth. Go, therefore. He says, All the power has come to me from heaven into Jesus. He's the vine. We abide in him. We, therefore, get the same power that's been given to Jesus. We're not Jesus, but we have the power of Jesus. To go, therefore, make disciples, do the work of God at our jobs, at our home, wherever we're at, we're able to exhibit that Christ-likeness. We need more Christ-like IT engineers. We need more Christ-like lawyers and doctors. We need more Christ-like workers at Aldi. Really, we need a lot more Christ-like workers at Aldi (laughs) and Little and Tesco and Asda and Sainsbury. We need all of this to have power. Can you say amen? If there's any Aldi workers here, I love you. I just want to tell you that right off the bat. But you really guys really need to get a better attitude. I want to tell you that. Acts 1.8 says, But you shall receive power from the Holy Spirit, and then you shall be my witnesses. So who gets power from the Holy Spirit? All those who are believers, right? Not just the ones he was talking to in Acts chapter 1. The scriptures were written for all mankind, all those who are believers. See, and understand this with me today. There is not a command given by God that we are incapable of performing. It would be cruel for him to say, here's what I want you to do, but I'm going to keep this tool away from you. You know, it's like, hey, I need you to cut this paper, but I want you to do it with this dull rock. Well, but God, you have this like finely sharpened German instrument here that can just slice through paper. No, no, no. Use the dull rock. You can't have this one. That would be cruel. But yet so many Christians are trying to live out their lives with a dull rock. Trying to live out their Christ without or their lives without the power that Christ gives. He will give it to you if you'll connect and stop trying to accomplish his work in God's or in your own power, but rather seek to accomplish it in his power. Are you with me this morning? Have you ever heard the statement, God helps those who help themselves? You heard it? Yeah, well, don't believe it. It's a lie. It is a lie. God helps those who die to themselves. God helps those who say, I'm empty and I need to be filled. God helps those who come to the end of their rope. God helps those who say, I have nothing to offer but you. God helps those who say, I, without you, I can do nothing. I'm in need of you. I'm desperate for you, God. That's who he helps, not those who help themselves. Am I saying that we do nothing? Of course not. That's not biblical either. What I'm saying is that we have to get to the place where we begin to realize that we have no power, no fuel on our own. Gracie and I were born in Southern California, and in Southern California on New Year's Day, they have this one particular 
parade that has really been broadcast throughout the world. It's called the Rose Bowl, uh, the Rose Parade. Uh, the Rose Bowl happens on that same day. It's called the Rose Parade. The Tournament of Roses is the official uh, uh, name of the parade. And it's a parade where these motorized floats that are all made up of flowers and plant-based items, every bit of it is made of that on the surface. Anything that you can see must have flowers or seeds or sticks, something like that. And they're beautiful, and they're just unbelievable. And uh, I've never been there. Gracie's actually been there where you can go after, and the smell of those uh, floats is just phenomenal, you know, and you can actually smell all of the flowers. And it's a really elegant parade. Has anybody seen the Rose Parade? No? Ah, well, you should YouTube. It's quite fascinating. However, there was this one beautiful, one year, many, many years ago, there was this one beautiful float that was going down the parade, you know, and there's just like hundreds of motorized floats that are going by. And all of a sudden it started sputtering and it stopped. Everybody panicked, held up the entire parade. They went out and looked, found out that the float was out of gas, out of petrol, no fuel. The shocking thing was is that it was a float that was produced by Standard Oil Company, which was, <laughs> which was the producer of most of the petrol in the U.S. at that time. And I thought about that as I read that. It's a common illustration. I thought, and many of us are like that. We should be the ones who have the power. We should be the ones who possess the power to make our spiritual floats go for, forward. But yet, oftentimes, we're the ones that are sputtering because we're running on our own power instead of the power that God has given us. See, through him, we can do all things, can't we? Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13 says, For I can do all things through him who strengthens me. So your commitment, your New Year's resolution should be more than just, hey, I'm going to increase the size of my biceps or triceps. It should be, which is not a bad thing. Some of you could use a little increase of the bicep and tricep area. Uh, It's not enough just to say, well, I'm going to lose 30 pounds and get into a size whatever dress this year. Sisters, not brothers, you know. (laughs) It's not enough to do that. We want you to get athletic. We don't mind if you have a weight loss program. Those are all good things. But recognize that God is saying, I want to move on the inside of you. I want to do something more than just what is outward. Outward is fine, but it only goes so far. I can do all things through him. Through him. Are you with me here today? Secondly, I want you to recognize the nature of God's power. This is a little bit of a tough one because I've been saying and preaching here and there and I've been contemplating this on my own mind, in my own mind. What would God's power look like if it was manifested? You know, as a leader of a church, I mean, I would be happy if like loads of people come in and I would say, well, there's the power of God. If a miracle happened, you know, someone got healed dramatically, oh, there's the power of God. But to be honest, I'm not exactly sure how it would manifest, what it would look like. I've seen the power of God in my own life and testimony and degrees in certain spots. So it's really hard to like put a a label on it and say, here's what we're shooting for, folks. So I don't want to do that. But I do want to tell you that the Bible describes the, the nature of God's power, okay? Matthew 6.13 says, For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. 2 Corinthians 4.7 says, But we have this treasure in earthen vessels, in earthen vessels, and then it begins to tell us that without the earthen vessel, well, let me back up. Let me back up. It belongs to him, and the treasure that we have is in our earthen vessel. He has power. He has earthen vessel. He needs to put it in us because our, we don't have a royal vessel. We don't have an indestructible vessel. We have a vessel that needs to be poured into. And so the first nature of the power is that it's indwelling power. 
it means it's inside of you already. It lives in you. So if you're a Christian here, and what I mean by a Christian, you should know this, but in case you don't, you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You're a follower of Christ. You strive to obey his word, of course. But by faith, you've accepted the gift of salvation, not of any works that you've done, but because of what he's done for you. And if that's you, then you're a born-again believer. You have God's spirit within you. You already have the power in you. The scripture says in 1 John 4, 4, You are from God, little children. You are from God, New Harvest Manchester. You are from God, brothers and sisters in Christ. You are from God and have overcome them, overcome the evil spirits of the world, because greater is he who is in you than he that is in the world. So whatever problem you're facing that's outside of you, your studies, your work, your spouse, your family, your temptations, uh, the, the struggles, I've got to tell you that what you have inside of you is already there. Romans 8, 9 says, you are in the Spirit, if indeed the Spirit of God dwells in you. <laughs> it does dwell in us. It does dwell in us. Do you know that? Have you become so religious and so separated from His Word that you don't even know you're carrying about the power that is unlimited that comes from above? See, because that's what happens as you grow stale in your walk with God. That probably doesn't apply to all of you, but there may be some that need to address that issue. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 6.19, Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you? <laughs> we, 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 we spend so much time sprucing up the temple. You know, we, we cut our hair, you know, we, we, we make sure things look fine. We get our clothes, you know, we, 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 we cleanse up the temple. And thank God for that. We need a clean temple. Can you say amen? But I want to tell you what's more important is what's already in you. You have the power of God through his spirit. Can you say amen? Understand that you already have what's needed inside of you. Our job and what's needed is for us to stay connected with him. The second thing you need to know about his power and the nature of it is that it's supernatural power. It's supernatural power. In other words, it's not about you. See, we can do a lot of things with human power. You can learn multiple languages. Some of you do. You have your, your bilingual, trilingual. Some of you have more than three languages that you know fluently, and you've learned that. That's something you've done. By the grace of God, true, but you've done it. Some of you have attained very high in the education system, and you have graduated with honors, and you have a, a, a lot of uh, things that the world looks at and says, wow, and you did that. I, I'm not denying that you did that. That was your power. By the grace of God, true, but it was you. If you begin to bulk up, as we talk about, and you want to get strong and athletic, if you want to slim down, if you want to start wearing fancy clothes and spruce up your looks and all of that, that is fine. That's something you did. By the grace of God, true, but it's something you did. I want to tell you that what God wants to do in you, though, is supernatural. It goes beyond all of those things, which are fine, but that's not the limit of what God wants to do. And sometimes Christians are only trying to get God's power to help them with natural things. Help me graduate. Help me find a job. Lord, bring me a man. Not me bring me a man, but maybe some of the ladies bring me a man. Sometimes that's what we do. God wants to go beyond that. 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3 and 4 says, For though we walk in the flesh, we live in this body, in other words, we do not war according to the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not of the flesh, but divinely powerful for the destruction of fortresses. See, if you have a battle going on spiritually, you need more than just Bible knowledge. And you know I'm a big promoter of Bible knowledge. But you need more than that. You need more than just getting together and being in a new atmosphere. And, oh, I just got out of this old atmosphere. And, oh, I, now I feel better. 
you might feel better, but it's not because you defeated any demonic uh, uh, deities. <laughs> it's because you got into a new atmosphere. If you're going to defeat demonic deities, if you're going to fight against spiritual darkness, if you're going to see your drug-addicted son or daughter come to Christ, If you're going to see your alcoholic husband or wife give their life over to God, it's going to take you with divine power. You're going to need something that's outside of yourself. You're going to need supernatural power. The supernatural power that fed 5,000 families with a meal of fish and bread. You're going to need uh, the power of God that enabled Peter to walk on water to reach uh, Jesus himself. Uh, You're going to need that power that parted the Red Sea and become miracles of the Old Testament. This is power that goes beyond what you can do. It's supernatural power. Can you say amen? amen? This is what's needed in 2018. We have far too much religiosity in our age. It doesn't matter which country you're from, which country you're planning on going to. I want to tell you, no one has a monopoly on the power of God. And every country has decaying religious systems. And all of us need this supernatural power. It's called dunamis power in the Greek. It's the power that's explosive. And I think as we abide in Christ, as we gain knowledge and apply it and begin to express it and begin to advance it and distribute it, then we begin to see the explosion of God in our lives if you're just going to keep it to yourself. No, that's not much. I've seen people, they go on trips, you know, and they buy all kinds of goodies at the location that they went to, some maybe food delicacies or some nice clothing or jewelry or what have you, whatever they like, and they bring back their, their, their booty, their, their treasure, their, their haul, you know, and they say, oh, I got you something, and you're looking at their thing, you're thinking, man, this is good, and they whip out some little thing, you know, <laughs> say, here, I got this for you, <laughs> some souvenir that has a name of the place that they went to, something you're never going to use, right, and sometimes that's how we Look at our walk with God. We're just handing out little trinkets to people. And we're keeping everything for ourselves. Lord, bless me. Financially, bless me. Help me. God blesses you financially so you can help somebody else. It's so you can be part of the the group. Uh, uh, if, If God shows you something in the scripture, it's not just for you to keep to yourself. Sometimes it's only for you, but if God shows you, you want to share that with somebody and explain that and encourage them. And in your prayer time, stop just praying for your blessing. Start praying for someone who needs something, someone who requires something, someone who is lacking. Distribute the supernatural power. I think about the story, and it's not my notes here, but it's coming to me. I wanted to share it briefly. You know, when Jesus came and he broke the bread, and then he gave it to the disciples, and the disciples distributed the bread, and that's when he was able to dis, uh, uh, feed all of the thousands of people that were there. It wasn't until he gave thanks, broke the bread, and they distributed it did the miracle become manifest. Sometimes we have it within us. We've got the bread and the fishes. But we're going, ah, happy meal. I'm going to eat myself. Oh, I've got my fish and chips. I'm here. I'm by myself. And God's saying, no, when you give it out, when you give out, that's when the miracle happens. Got it? Not only is it indwelling power, supernatural power, it's overcoming power. Overcoming power. This power also helps you. And that's why when we tap into it properly, it's just the total package. It's got everything. You know, the other day I cleaned the house for Gracie, and we, you know, we share chores and stuff, but I cleaned the house, and she was, like, impressed. and Like, wow, you cleaned the house, made her some lunch or dinner. I can't remember now what it was. Did that, bought her something from the shop that she wanted and thought that I had forgotten, but I had remembered right in here that she wanted that thing. Because, brothers, let me tell you, it's not the cost of the thing. It's the fact you remember something they like. 
can be small, but just remember. So I did all this, and she's like, babe, thanks, and she's like, I go, girl, you got the total package right here. <laughs> I was peacocking, you know what I've been... I want to tell you that this is how God's power is, not quite like that, but it's the total package. John 16, says, in the world you have tribulation. You can't escape tribulation. You can't escape problems. Uh, you're going to have trials. Uh, but he says, take courage. Uh, I, I, the vine, the one, the one who has the power, has overcome the world, and you can overcome it too because it's in you. And it's supernatural, and that's awesome. 1 John 4, 4, the scripture we read earlier, you are from God, little children. The power that is in you, greater is he that's in you than he that's in the world. See, understand with me today that God's power is here to help each one of you in your daily living. But don't just pick number three. Don't just pick number three. Because that's our problem, is we pick and choose the things of God. God's power is a total package. He wants you to know that it's already there in you. It's supernatural, though. It's not about you. And a lot of times it's not even for you. But it will help you. Don't just come to him constantly. Lord, help me. Help me. Some people think, if I just come to church, he'll help me. He might, and a good chance that he will but not just to do that he wants to do more than that because see if let's say you have a bill that needs to be paid you come to church lord help me pay my bill and he blesses you with some money and you go yeah i paid the bill and then you don't really do anything after that what good was it that he paid that bill for you i mean anybody could have done that for you the council could have done that for you right your your spouse your mate your parents could have done that for you Your parents have done that for you. (laughs) What we're looking at is something that's larger than ourselves. I'm trying to drive this home because I think so many Christians have become so introverted in their walk with God. It's become about them rather than him and us. It's all it's become. I've seen pastors, you know, when I first started pastoring, all we wanted to do was go out and start a church. That's kind of all we wanted to do. Matter of fact, most of us that I know, at least in my group that we were kind of being raised in God, we we gave up almost everything we had in order to get the opportunity to go out and start a church. We worked jobs in order to finance the church. We did all of those things, and we didn't really think about blessings later on. It seems to me now that people and couples are very concerned with their material blessings. God will take care of you, I promise that. And you might even become super wealthy in God because he's able to do that. But we don't do it because we're going to get that. If he doesn't give it to us, can you be as content without as you are with? See, that's the key. And I I promise you, I've I've been on both ends of those spectrums. And what matters is what's happening in here. Are you with me here today? So let me finish up and just ask you a couple of questions here today that I'd like you to answer on your own. Are you trying to do things in your life and kind of trying to fulfill your, your task as a Christian without God's hand in your life? Are you just trying to do it on your own? Because that's something only you can answer. We can try and guide you in there, but really you need to answer that. Let me ask you this. Do you find yourself getting overly tired in the things of God? I mean, we all get weary, let's be honest. You know, serving God can become difficult. Trials can happen. And, you know, especially if you're in ministry, yeah, it can drain you. But do you find yourself overly spiritually weary on the inside of your life? Do you find yourself running on empty and maybe even running out of fuel at some place in your walk with God? Are you really seeking to accomplish his purposes in your life? 
Here's another question. Are you staying connected to God through his word, through church, through service, through attitude that's right with him? Are you staying connected with him? Another question, are you relying on his promises? When you look at your difficult situation in front of you, what is it that first comes to your mind on how to overcome that? Is it, well, I need to apply myself more. Well, I need to get more money. Well, I need to have more effort. I need to try harder. Oh, I need to get rid of this person and that situation. Then I can do it. Is that how you look at it? Because all of those things may be true, but you've looked at it from the wrong perspective. You ought to be saying, okay, what's God's promise concerning this? What does God say about my lack of money? What does God say about that? What does God say about my marital conflict? We're always at each other's throat. We're always fighting. We've got to the place where we don't even like each other anymore. God, can you just sort him out, sort her out? Well, what does God's promise say about that? See, see what I'm getting at? Are you relying on your own or relying on his promises? See, so today, I'm trying to get you to connect, to start connecting, because this is going to take a process. I need you to start connecting to his unlimited power. You know, in our building here, we have internet service and Too many of you have the password, and too many of you have uh, know what it is because when you all get on it, even the pastor cannot get on the internet. I have to use my own phone to get on the internet in my own church. To consider it a blessing, gift from us to you. But the truth is, is that there's just not enough bandwidth for everyone here. We all, you, you know, especially if you're one of those cheap Christians that doesn't have internet at home and comes to the church and downloads all your stuff, you know, and uh, does all your updating. Yeah, you know who you are. I know you too, man, you know, and does all this and says, whoo, yes, okay. If you're like, (laughs) don't worry, I'm not going to suss you out here, expose you. But if we all do that, there's just not enough bandwidth for everybody. But with God, God, there's unlimited bandwidth unlimited power that we can have from him. There is no power that you need in your life that cannot be accessed. It doesn't matter if your brothers and sisters are all pounding it at the same time. I need the same thing from God as you need. Don't worry. He'll come through if you'll follow his procedures, if you follow his plan for your life. Has this made a little bit of sense to you? I hope it has today. I hope it's reminded you of some things you know to be true. I hope it sparked a fresh interest in connecting with God's power. My prayer is that you walk out of here going, I believe in his power. You might not fully understand how it connects to your situation, but you believe in that, and you think I need to connect with that. If, you, if you're, that's you, then God's moving on your life right now. He's going to do great things. Let's give Jesus a big hand clap today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you've been blessed or challenged by today's preaching and you'd like to get in touch with us, the easiest way is via our website at www.newharvestuk.com. You can email us at info at newharvestuk.com or look us up on Facebook or Twitter. You can call us on 0161 278 6305 Or you can even write to us at 194 Chapel Street, Salford, Manchester, M36BY. We'd also like to extend a warm welcome for you to join us at any of our services. However you might be feeling, and whatever you might have been told, know this. God loves you, and there's a place for you in his kingdom. God bless you, we're praying for you, and once again, thank you for listening.